Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel, and in this video we're going to deconstruct the Wasteland Workshop trailer that has recently come out. Now if you haven't seen this trailer I would suggest you watch it first because it's going to be interrupted multiple times throughout this video. You can click on the link on screen now or in the description to check it out. Once you've watched it all the way through uninterrupted, come back and check out this video where you might learn some things that you may have missed. So let's begin shall we? This first couple of shots is just showing the sole survivor killing dangerous things in the wasteland. A few days out in the wasteland and it's time to kick back at home. My home. Made my way. So pretty quickly we're straight back to the settlements and in this shot here we can see in the background that building is already using some of the new concrete walls that are being introduced in this DLC. One thing about humans. We keep trying to destroy this. Now this element that's being introduced I find really cool. As you'll see there, the thing that's being built is a garden plot. So instead of having to plant your food plants outside, you can now plant them inside buildings. I really like this because it makes it much easier to protect your settlers if they're farming inside a very well protected building. Instead of having to send them to farm outside where they will be heavily subject to attacks. Planet. And the planet? just won't let. In this shot here we discovered that the garden plots can host four plants. Now I don't know if there is actually a four plant limitation or if it's just due to spacing or if you can do some tricky things like plant four plants in each corner and then one in the middle or something like that. I don't know if it's an actual limitation or just a spacing limitation. Life always finds a way. This shot here we see the soul survivor running through the glowing sea, relatively unprotected so this is pointing towards that the player is getting heavily irradiated. Not that this is something new but it leads perfectly into the next shot. Time to use this century's advanced technology to my own advantage. Here we go, check out this thing, the decontamination arch. It's pretty self-explanatory that this thing is used to remove radiation from the player character. This thing is almost a game changer, especially with the new survival mode, where even right away has a negative effect on your character. So this decontamination arch is going to be something that I think will be built in every single settlement, especially if you're playing on survival mode. To hell with all this radiation. In this next shot we see some of the new concrete structures, including concrete floors Nothing says home like and concrete walls, and as you will see in the selection slider down the bottom, there are quite a few choices and variations. Corrugated metal and loose live wires. Hey, it's comfortable. Now although there's nothing too amazing in this shot, we will see over on the tool bench that there is a Nixie tube display showing the numbers 02. This is probably something very simple like a calendar or a clock. And on the wall quite close to that we will see the very first mounted head. Never Which in the next shot we discover is a dog. And if you look very closely, there is actually a cat's head mounted on the wall as well. Although I am normally for goofy stuff like a mounted cat's head on the wall, I think that this time Bethesda might have crossed the fee line. Never said it was safe. <clears throat> In this shot here we can see that there is a whole bunch of new traps. This first trap is the spring trap. Its description is the spring loaded impaling trap. Look, I don't know. The second one is the saw blade trap. When powered, spinning blades move across the track. And before we move on to the next shot, I want you to have a look at the wall over there with the neon lettering on it. Enter at your own risk. Now given all these traps and this seems to be some kind of hallway maze of death, I don't know if this is purely settlement defense or if you can actually set up some kind of messed up death maze scenario. Because as we know, that kind of arena element is being introduced, so this might also be some kind of survival maze like we see in the Saw movies. I don't know for sure, but it's definitely food for thought. Always play by the rules. Here we see the saw blade trap in action, and just beyond the saw blade trap we can see a shit ton of trip wires. They appear to be hooked up to some flamey traps just beyond that metal grill there. At the end of the hallway it says turn here and there seems to be some kind of mounted giant claw on the wall. Not too sure what that is, but it could be a Milo Queen arm. But mostly because out here in the commonwealth? Now we're introduced for the first time to the spike trap, pressure plate with embedded spikes. There are no rules. And this is where we start getting into the cages. As we can see, they are building a Milo cage. Chance to capture a Milo when powered, shut off to release captured creature. Now as you will see throughout the rest of the trailer, it always seems like they're building these cages on their settlements. So provided the cages are powered, all you need to do is go out exploring and come back and hopefully you will have a creature captured at your settlement. So all the capturing of creatures is actually done all internally within your settlement. Again, pure speculation, but I definitely took 
took note that they're building a Milo cage next to the ocean. This made me think that perhaps getting a better chance of catching a specific creature will be increased if you place a trap at a settlement that's closer to where they normally hang out, i.e. they're building a Milo cage next to the ocean. In this harsh new world, you may not be able to stop the nightmares. Here we see them release the Myloke and it's hostile and attacks them. But luckily in this shot, we have the Beta Wave Emitter. Creatures released from cages while this is turned on will be non-aggressive towards you and your settlers. You should also note that these things require some perks, as we will see over on the right hand side of the screen. So using these Beta Wave Emitters is how we control creatures. But you can control them. Here again we see a new cage, the cat cage. I don't know if this is for settlement company or if you're gonna put a cat in the arena. What? So, maybe I get lonely sometimes. Speaking of which, we can see here there is a built up arena or battleground, and up on an elevated level there's some chairs with your settlers watching, enjoying the spectacle. This is pretty interesting, as we see this arena combatant is standing on this blue metal raised platform. Now the only reason I can think of that this thing exists is if there's some kind of subterranean gladiator fighter cell, and then the combatant stands on this thing, which is then raised up to the arena level. Now I don't know if this is going to be purely a visual thing, or if there's actually going to be some subterranean cells that we can build at our settlements. Capturing them is fun. But letting so here we have a Deathclaw cage, and of course a Deathclaw is going to come out and start fighting. Just quickly take note of the giant street lamps that you can now build. But something more interesting is that inside the arena where the fight is about to take place, there is a beta wave emitter. Now I don't know if this stays on during the entire fight, or if you bring the Deathclaw out and then turn the beta wave emitter off, so it then begins fighting whoever is in the arena. Or if it's left on the entire time, so that at no point is the Deathclaw interested in you or your settlers, and only concentrates on whoever is in the arena. The mouth? Hell yeah. That's right. Entertain me. Sometimes it feels like every- And not that it's too important, but if you choose to, you can put Preston Garvey in the arena up against a Deathclaw. So this seems like some kind of one-sided fight, right? Because if Preston Garvey is a companion, he cannot be killed. And a one-sided fight seems like a silly mechanic. So maybe if you choose to put a companion in the arena, they can be killed. Once and for all. Thing in the Commonwealth wants to kill you. Are they threats? Nah. Decorations. And here in this hallway we are introduced to what may be the entirety or perhaps just some of the mounted head options. We've got Myloks, Yao Guai, Radstags, Super Mutant Hounds, Death Claws and Blood Bugs or Stingwings or whatever the hell that annoying insect is. I never was the type to want my name up in lights. Sometimes you just need to advertise. And in this last couple of shots, we are introduced once again, and kind of fully, to the neon sign options. So we've got traffic lights, we've got the craftable neon open sign, we've got hanging light bulbs that are at least blue, I don't know if there's other color options, and of course the neon writing wasteland workshop. Now hopefully creating these neon signs are quite simple, and in the same way you type in your character name, you type in which word you want, and it will create that sign in whichever color you've chosen. I think this is how it will work, because because it would be pretty stupid any other way. It's gonna be damn cool and it's gonna make making text much easier instead of using those colored light boxes, which I did and I spent many hours trying to make words out of those stupid squares. So these neon signs are incredibly welcome. And there you have it, my deconstruction of the new trailer for Fallout 4's DLC, Wasteland Workshop. I hope I was able to point out some things that you may have missed in the initial watch. And although some of the things are speculation, they are things to think about. And as I'm sure you will agree, some really cool new features. And the Wasteland Workshop is a must buy, especially if you're into settlements or if you plan on playing in the new survival mode. As in survival mode, settlements play a huge part. And having these new broader, safer and smarter settlements options is a must. Hi, I'm Bethesda. And with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.